What's up, this is Cole here, Wolfpack. Hope you all are well. Getting set to take off here in about 30 minutes from Seattle, headed to Switzerland and then into France for the super secret giant e-bike launch. Let's go uh, get set up on a bike. Back. We got a quick rundown of this awesome bike with the boys here from Giant. Um, they're going to do a little introduction, give you a quick rundown, and uh, kind of the ins and outs of what makes this bike so great. I'm uh, Joost Bakker, by the way, uh, category manager for the e-bikes, means I lead the product development for these bikes. Uh, and with me here is Fede, and he's our lead engineer, uh, whose job it was to get this bike uh, oh, well, out, actually. But, yeah. On the trails? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So what sets this bike off from, from other bikes in the industry as far as geometry, chain stays, you know, why would someone choose this bike? Um, I think a lot of it is, is proven, uh, proven spec, proven technology, proven suspension, uh, proven geometry as well. Uh, you, you don't see figures that are out of the, uh, that are completely out of the ordinary, out of the, uh, the expected in that yeah. sense. Um, and I think that makes the bikes makes you feel right at home on the, on the bike. Uh, it's immediately, instantly, uh, you know, this bike was designed for bike riders. This bike was designed for people, experienced riders. And the geometry is right in there, the spec is right in there, matching, making sure that you're, it's, it's, it's a bike. You, you hop on it and it rides. I can it. attest to that because of the trails we rode. Yep. First day on the bike, <laughs> pointing straight down, was it was wild. Um, and you know, I, I'm very new to e-bikes. I've been a bike rider for 15 years, and this was the first proper e-mountain bike that I put my legs over. And it was a it was a big change, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't like I had to learn how to ride a bike. You know, when we pitched down some gnarly stuff yesterday, and it was awesome. Um, you know, I think one of the things that readers and riders like to know is, you know, how does it feel when I get on it? Do I need you know, what does it take to get used to? How much, how different is it than my normal bike? And like you said, I think the geometry numbers speak for themselves. Yeah. Um, and you know, the design process obviously comes really heavy into that. And I think to get a good riding bike, there's challenges. Um, yeah. you know, what, what would you say if you had to pick one thing that made you not sleep at night in that design process? <laughs> like, maybe there's a hundred, maybe there's yeah. none, you know, but I think that's, it's cool, cool to know kind of behind the scenes what went into, you know, making this bike a reality. Uh, well, we well we have really set up from the beginning. Right? We have to get the best integration as possible. So it's integration of the, the drive unit, the the battery, speed sensor, cable routing, charging port. So all that was a, actually a very big challenge because on an e-bike, you know, you, you have so much more cables, connectors, uh, a very large battery which you have to secure very well. So, especially on a bike like this, so that's why we, we, for example, we came up with a new bike lock, which uses a, a normal Torx T25 key, so you can really lock the key in place and make sure it's totally secure. So that's something we're I did quite proud of. Once in that, what, 56 kilometers, 30, yeah. 34 miles, 
and 10,000 feet of <laughs> descent. Like, yeah. This is a big day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to have virtually nothing go wrong uh, on, for me, a, a, a whole new system, whole new trail network. You know, it was my first time actually using Axis. Yeah. And that, well, that was one thing. The only thing that took me a little getting used to, other than kind of adjusting for the center of gravity and how to, where to position my body, was the shifting. It was, it was a little different at first. Um, and, but by the end of the day, it was kind of sad to go back <laughs> to my mechanical <laughs> stuff. Um, yeah. and, you know, how clean the cockpit is. Um, yeah. Yeah, and also I think the Exus is, is very good for an uh, e-bike because you have less wear on cables. And the shifting is very precise. So it's, it's also more reliable for your complete drivetrain. Durable, so that's, that's also a, a very big improvement, I think, on e-bikes. Cool. With the with the power settings, we had talked about, st you know, staying in that auto mode. You know, what what brought you guys to bring that out instead of just having a self selector like many others out there? Really having that access to to the technology. Um, so we have two additional sensors in the motor, uh, an angle sensor that measures if you're how steep you're riding up or how steep you're riding down, uh, and an accelerometer. So basically measuring. Uh, if you're accelerating or, or braking. And that really was necessary, and we knew that that was necessary to be able to get a good functioning uh, smart support mode. So, uh, uh, um, so having that was a, a long wish for us. Yeah. Finally having it, <laughs> and then we had to spend the time on the bike to tune that smart support mode um, to, uh, yeah, to make it work as well as it does now. Sure. With the, the linkage and everything from, from your non E range, you know, what kind of what changed in the kinetics of actually oh uh, adjusting for this extra weight? Uh, is it the, the distribution of where the links are or then the actual you know placement of the pivots? Yeah, so the pivot points are actually quite different than our normal rate. And that has first of all to do with the drive. So the drive's quite quite great, quite big here. Um, so we had to relocate some of the, the, the lower pivot points, and then of course you have to check, well, change all the, the other pivot points as well. So we came up with a total new system, and together with Fox, we we came up with this suspension setting after uh, a lot of testing and uh, feedback from uh, from, from uh, some of our pro riders. So uh, actually, we're we're very happy with this how this turned out to be. So it's it's very subtle, smooth, and, uh, but still, you know, enough. It has enough support and pop if you want to have a, a ride very playful. So very I, I did notice running a little bit more, like, again, new to e-bikes, I did run a little more pressure in the shock and the fork yeah. that I had been used to in the past. So starting, I was a little worried, like, am I going to get on something that's really rowdy and not, not be able to control it? But that the weight really felt good. Letting off the brakes and just plowing ahead on a trail, you have no idea what the, what's around the corner, <laughs> yeah, what's over the next yeah, log, yeah. following a French guy that knows the trail exactly and yeah. is willing to just let off the brakes and go. Um, that is to me where I felt the bike really came alive, is yeah. when it got fast, rough, and yes. you know, again, it's the, the weight aspect to me, it took, it took a, basically by the time we got down the first ascent, I understood where, where yeah. my body needed to be. And then from there, it was like, okay, how, how comfortable I am on the trail, not on the bike. Yeah, um, and for me that was that was a huge win because I, I I've definitely been on some bikes that you know, didn't didn't sit well, couldn't really adjust to. Yeah. Um, and when I, I found myself on some of the too steep of stuff, I did drop down into the uh, manual mode. So then when I I mean when we were pitched over, even the a little bit of the weight on that pedal would kind of give me a, a boost in an area that I wanted no boost. Um, <laughs> But that was, that was really the only time I came out of the, the auto mode. What is your personal favorite nitty gritty either tech spec or just overall part about this bike from riding it or from building it? What, it could be the axis, it could be the shock, it could be the linkage. Uh, so for me, it's the, I think uh, our integrated down tube protector. So you have the battery cover and we have all the, the motor covers. And usually there is a big gap in between, but that's also the, the place where a lot of dirt can come in to the, the covers. So we, we came up with this, this design. So we have an integrated down tube protector. It's actually a rubber piece, which has a magnet and it just snaps onto the, the motor covers. So it's fully sealed, it's well protected. I think that's one of my favorite uh, parts on this bike. Yeah, yeah it was uh, when we took it off, uh, just for the quick charge launch, it was not like 
again, new to e-bikes. Right. I never have done this before. It was pretty seamless and yeah, straightforward. It's very easy to just um, and pick it up, put it in, and then it snaps into place. So. And I may or may not have uh, banged it on a, a tree yesterday. So <laughs> it, it, but it's still there. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And how about you? Um, I'm really stoked just with the overall ride and how geometry worked out. Uh, the whole package. The whole package, yeah. you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of stuff where it's very similar to like the rain, mm -hmm. the, the non e-bike version of the rain, um, and then there's some differences. For example, it had a longer uh, chain state, uh, which on a bike with, with a powerful motor is, is really helpful actually. Sure. Um, and uh, with that also comes a, a seat angle that is a little bit more, I would say, moderate. Yeah. Um, just to make sure that your body position doesn't shift too much to the front. Sure. And um, uh, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm most happy about with how this bike turned out to be. It makes it a really capable yet lively bike cool. for, uh, for an e-bike, with you know, a big e-bike. Yeah, right. Yeah. Really to cap it off, I think, who, who is this bike aimed for? You know, is this, like me, maybe someone that, this is my first introdu introduction to an e-bike. Av avid bike rider, I love steep, I love fast and doing jumps. Um, but could this be ridden by someone that is, that is learning as well? You know, what, what is that, what is your target market for this specific bike? It, it can definitely be ridden, obviously, sure. for, for, for a beginner, but the, the whole goal with this bike was to target experienced riders. Now, they may not all be as aggressive as a rider as, as you are, they may not be as capable, but all of the people that we focus on are, are, are habit bike riders, uh, whether it would be more trail or more uh, casual riding, but uh, for sure, experienced riders that want to go out and find bigger terrain, bigger like, like Josh Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> the three seconds I followed him yesterday. <laughs> God. Yep. <laughs> So yeah, um, ex experienced riders is the is the, the the market where we develop this bike for. That doesn't mean that it's not that it's a product that should um, not fit a non-experienced rider. Of course, um, I think the bike is plenty capable for uh, for somebody getting into into bike riding. Uh, but the bike comes best to life on on aggressive steep mm. terrain, um, both up and down. And um, and yeah, it, t it takes a certain level of skill to 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 ride that. Totally, I was blown away. Uh, there was three specific technical climbs we did yesterday. The first one, I had no idea it was coming up, and just bombed into it. And I think I, I don't think I shifted into that first one. Wet rocks and yeah. easily the, the steepest thing I've climbed on a bike. <laughs> and so it was it was like, okay. I guess I'm gonna go up and made it to the top. I was like. Whoa! This that was like that was fun. You know, I'm not right, used to associating right. up like with technical fun. up and fun. <laughs> then we had like a little photo shoot uh, with your crew yesterday on something we wrote down. Like, oh yeah, let's get you going up. And just, okay, and, uh, sure, yeah. it was. I had to kind of figure out. Okay, what gear do I stay in with right. the torque specs on, on how how much watts I'm putting out myself and then the bike. Yep. And going up something like that for it was like a sustained. 30 feet over roots and like yep. over a big root and then little roots and then around a corner. When I got to the top, I was like, I feel like I just did like a full run. I was stoked, I was breathing, and it's definitely a workout. But uh, myself, that is a 20 mile day, is I'm pretty tired generally and yep. don't really want to do much after that. And we did, you know, close close to 40, it was 30, 36 yep. or 37. And, woke up at six this morning, went back up, and it was right. really cool to get that many miles, um, but also feel good, not just like, I'm, I don't want to ride the next right, day. Right. Um, I think that is a really cool option for those that maybe live five miles from the trails and they want to ride in and they have a right. good network. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I was blown away um, from the moment I got on it and just literally, first thing I did when I sized up, they said, oh, guys, don't go in the bike park today. I say that for tomorrow. And I said, okay, I won't go. Or don't take, don't take the chair like I think it was. I just followed the chairlift line straight straight up the hill. It's like, all right, this is a good way to test it. And just bombed up and people were like heckling me down from the chairlift and uh, that was that was really fun. Totally new experience and I'm ready to own one. <laughs> good. Yeah. Cool. Good day. Good cool. Well I appreciate your time guys and uh, Thank you. safe yeah. trip back and uh, me too. See you see you soon, hopefully. See you soon. Thank you.